Before we look at how we can apply functions on quantum computers, we will quickly look at how classical computers perform operations on bits and how we make classical operations reversible. There are four main operations we can perform on classical bits. The AND, OR, NOT and exclusive OR operations. Let's go through each one of them quickly. The simplest is the NOT gate which flips 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Here is the truth table for the gate where x is the input and f of x is the output. As you can see this gate acts on one bit. Now let's look at the AND gate. Here is the truth table for the gate. The operation acts on two bits and returns 1 if the two bits are 1 and 0 otherwise. The OR gate acts on two bits as well. If either of the bits is a 1 or both are 1 then it returns 1 otherwise it returns 0. Lastly we have the exclusive OR gate. Here is the truth table for the operation. As you can see it returns 1 if either of the inputs is 1 and returns 0 if both the bits are 0 or 1. We use the exclusive OR operation to make reversible classical gates. We say a function f is reversible. If given f of x we can determine the value of x. So if we are given the output we can determine the input. So this function here where we negate the second bit is reversible since each row of the truth table for this function is unique. So we can map each output to a unique input. But the OR operation on the other hand is not reversible since if we get an output of 1 we cannot say what the input was. It could have been any of these three inputs. To make any classical gate reversible, we must input another bit, let's call it c, and instead of only returning f of x, we return the input x as well as c exclusive ord with f of x. This makes the operation reversible. Let's look at converting the OR gate to a reversible operation. Here is a normal OR gate, and here is a reversible OR gate. As you can see, we input another bit c and return it exclusive ORD with the output. Now looking at the truth table, each row of the outputs is unique, so the gate is reversible, since we can determine the input from the output. What is the point in all this? Well, with quantum computers, all operations besides measuring the qubits must be reversible. This is because every operation must be unitary. If you remember from the first section of this course, unitary matrices rotate and flip a vector, so they must be reversible. In the next lesson, we will discuss how we can apply functions on quantum computers using the same techniques that we used to make reversible classical gates.